Why is Satan still in heaven and able to come before the throne of God? And so what's being asked there is Satan today is, he, he has access to heaven. Why is that? Why is Satan still in heaven and able to come before the throne of God? Get with me Job 1 verse 6. Job chapter 1 and verse 6. Now, while you're turning there, I'll, I'll just make the point that God doesn't expel Satan from heaven until Satan accomplishes the purposes that God has for him to do. In other words, God has some things that he is allowing Satan to accomplish, and until those things are done, God is not going to expel him from heaven since he needs to be there to perform them. So look with me at Job 1, verse 6. Job 1, 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So when, when Job is tested, you can see that Satan can be in the presence of God, and it's, it's kind of the sort of thing where Satan has rebelled at that point, but there are still interactions that God and Satan have. There are conversations that take place. And so Satan at times presents himself before the Lord along with the other sons of God because God requires them to do so. Now, fast forward, if you would, to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. Revelation 12, 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So one of the things Satan was doing in heaven is he was an accuser of the brethren and he was accusing them day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Verse 12, therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. What verse 12 is talking about there is the heavens and those that are in the heavens are going to rejoice when Satan is expelled. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. What Revelation 12 demonstrates is that Satan is allowed to continue in the heaven until the middle of the 70th week. Can anyone think of a reason why God would allow Satan to be in heaven from creation all the way up to the middle of the 70th week and that be the point at which Satan no longer has access to heaven? And what I'm going to suggest to you the reason is, is this. If you think about the dispensation of grace, God's purpose during the dispensation of grace is to form the body of Christ that is going to receive a heavenly inheritance. During the dispensation of grace, everyone that gets saved gets into the body of Christ. At the rapture, everyone that's in the body of Christ gets a new spiritual body, a celestial body that is designed to function in the heaven. After they get that body, what's the next event that they experience? The judgment seat of Christ. And when they go through the judgment seat of Christ, they receive their reward. What term does Paul frequently use to describe the believer's reward? Crowns. Well, crowns are all about governmental position, aren't they? They're, in other words, they're, a crown relates to governmental authority. Paul says in Ephesians 6 today that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So what is the case today during the dispensation of grace is that Satan and his minions, they are still in those heavenly positions of power. 
But once the body of Christ is fully formed, gets their new bodies, and receives their new assignments, there is no longer any reason for Satan and his minions to be in those seats. So what, what God does in Revelation 12 is he instructs Michael, remove Satan and his minions from the heaven. Kick them out because their successors have been identified, which is the body of Christ. So then Satan is cast down the earth. Why does God allow Satan to be on the earth at that point? Well, God allows Satan to be on the earth and exert his wrath as a form of judgment upon Israel. But notice something with me. Get Revelation 20. Revelation chapter 20. And we'll look at verse 1. Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Notice verse 3. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Now I'm going to suggest this to you. We use the phrase shut up all the time, don't we? And shut up means what? Quit talking. Well, what God did with Satan is he shut him up by doing what? By putting him in the bottomless pit. And he shut him up so that he would not do what? He would not deceive the nations. So here's what I want you to notice. When Satan rebels, Satan has his own objectives that he's trying to accomplish. He wants to take the heaven and the earth for his glory. He wants to sit in the sides of the north. There, there's a whole agenda that he wants to accomplish. Of that agenda, none of it will ultimately be accomplished. Satan will lose. He will accomplish none of it. But what God does with Satan is he, for a time, allows him to exercise certain authorities to accomplish God's purposes. So let me give you a for instance. What does Satan do during the dispensation of grace? He has doctrines of devils. So what God has done is he has given us the word of God. If you want to know the truth, is there a place that you can find the truth? There is. But is there false doctrine to scratch the ears of those who would like to believe something else? There is. And God is okay with it being that way because he wants to give man the choice as to whether do you want to believe the truth or would you ha rather have your ears tickled? So Satan is doing God's bidding in providing the doctrines of devils as something that the contrary can believe. So why is Satan still in, he in heaven and able to come before the throne of God? Because God is willing for Satan to exercise that authority for a period of time. I'll close with this thought. Satan has all of these evil schemes. He wants to accomplish his purposes. He's causing all kinds of harm and all of those things. But all of it will ultimately fail. It will be complete and utter and total failure. Satan will end up in the lake of fire. Jesus Christ will be demonstrated to the universe to be the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And Satan will be tormented in the lake of fire beyond any other creature in the universe because the gravity and severity of his sins require a commensurate punishment. When Romans 2.5 talks about man treasuring up wrath, man treasures up wrath by sinning, 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 and more sinning, right? And since God is a just God, if someone commits a bunch more sins... What do they have to receive? More punishment. Unless their sins are forgiven by the blood of Christ, a man has to pay for all of his sins. Well, what's going to happen with Satan? Satan was a murderer from the beginning. 
He's caused untold havoc throughout time, and he will have to give account and pay for all of those evil deeds.